In today's ThingScript tutorial, I'll be showing you how to build your very own TTM Squeeze Scan. Even if you're new to ThingScript, you'll be able to follow along and by the end of this video, you'll know how to build a scan which looks for five squeeze dots in a row. These are five of the red squeeze dots and will also include stacked moving averages as a trend condition. Let me show you an example of the scan we're going to be building run on today's market activity. Here are the results that we got run on the daily time frame chart. And if we zoom into Costco here, here's what a chart of Costco looks like. We can see we have stacked moving averages and we have five squeeze dots in a row. These are the types of stocks we're looking to identify with this scan. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to build exactly this scan all by yourself. Now let's get started with diving into first understanding how the TTM squeeze indicator works, and then we're going to write some code. Now to get started, let's first review the different plot variables that exist inside of the TTM squeeze indicator. The plot variables you can find right down here inside of the study settings of the TTM squeeze indicator. This is the built-in indicator inside of Thinkorswim, and that indicator has three different plot variables. Now, out of the three plot variables, the one that we care about in order to scan whether or not we have a squeeze is the squeeze alert variable. So let's dive deeper into the squeeze alert to see what that variable looks like and what it outputs. Down here on the chart underneath the TTM squeeze, I've plotted out the squeeze alert variable. You should notice it varies between one of two values, either a zero or a one. If we zoom in to every single time that this value is zero, we can see that that exists whenever the squeeze dots are red. So any single time that the squeeze alert is zero, that means we have a red dot squeeze. We can see that happening here. If we take a look at the other time where we have red squeeze dots, we can see the same idea holding true. So that gives us a hint around what we need to scan for in order to see five red squeeze dots in a row. We're looking for five zeros in a row. Now, every single time that we have a green dot here, we can see that the squeeze alert value goes up to one. So the value is true or one whenever we don't have a squeeze and the value is zero or false every single time we do have a squeeze. We can use that when writing our code. Now, for those of you that would like to download the scans ahead of time to follow along, I'll leave a download link in the description box below. Inside of that download link, you'll find two shared links. That's for both a bullish and a bearish scan. And this scan looks for exactly what we just talked about. Five red squeeze dots in a row and stacked EMAs, the eight, the 21, the 34 EMAs, along with the 50 and the 200 SMAs. And we're looking for that both on the bullish and bearish condition. For volatility box members, I've added an extra module to the squeeze course in which we're going to be building a similar scan, but this time using the triple pro squeeze indicator. That means we need to scan for five red, five black, or five yellow, or any combination of five red, black, or yellow dots for the different squeezes we have available. Same idea, you can find shared links with the bullish and bearish scans inside. And keep in mind, if you haven't already reviewed the squeeze course, I'd recommend doing so. All of the indicators, back testers, and scans are included for free with your volatility box membership. All right, with that, let's dive in and start writing our code to build our own squeeze scan. Now, inside of our Thinkorswim platform, we're going to go to the scan tab to get started with building our own scan. And here I have the scan running inside of the S&P 500. You can change the watch list that you scan for right up here. Now, keep in mind to follow along, you will need to be in the live money version of Thinkorswim. Custom study filters are not supported in paper money. Now your scan should most likely look something like this if it's blank, or you might have some default filters. You can leave them if you'd like, but to incorporate the squeeze and the EMAs, we need to click add filter and then click study. Now this will add by default an ADX crossover study. Click this dropdown and come all the way down and select custom to start writing our own custom code here. Navigate to the ThingScript editor you can change the time frame right up here. I have mine set to the daily time frame, and that's what we're going to be using. Now, the first thing that we need to identify 
are places where we have five squeeze dots in a row. Now we already talked about how the squeeze alert variable allows us to very easily see whether or not we have a squeeze dot. If the squeeze alert is equal to zero, then that means we have a squeeze. So this is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and define the squeeze alert first and combine that into some condition which allows us to scan for five of these in a row. Now to do that, I'm going to create a variable called def and we'll call this variable five dots in a row. And we can set this equal to, first off, just a squeeze alert. Let's start with something simple and then add more conditions to this. Now to reference the squeeze alert plot variable, we need to start by first referencing the indicator. So that's the TTM squeeze indicator. Since we're referencing it, we need to make sure to add the parentheses here. Then we'll press the period key. And inside now we can reference a plot variable inside of the TTM squeeze indicator, which for us is the squeeze alert value. You'll notice that you can even start to autofill once you reference the indicator that you're looking for. If I show you that one more time, if we were to start typing squeeze alert, it's an automatic suggestion that Thinkorswim will give you here. Okay, so now that we have the squeeze alert, if we close this out with the semicolon, all this is doing is referencing the TTM squeeze alert value. We need to check is that value equal to zero. Remember, that's the condition we're looking for. So now I can say TTM squeeze alert is equal to zero. Now, if we were to simply run this, this would give us all of the places where today the TTM squeeze has a red dot. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for places where we have five in a row. So to look for five in a row, we can use the sum function. So now if we wrap the sum function around the squeeze alert value that we just created, and we pass in the value five as the check that we're doing, so now we're saying, hey, go and get the sum of the TTM squeeze alert value over the past five bars. That should give us a numerical value. Now, if that numerical value is equal to zero, then that means that we have five TTM squeezes in a row that have the value of zero. So now we no longer need to run the check as the equal to as part of the sum value. So all we've done here is we've said, Okay, go and fetch the TTM squeeze alert value and go and get that over the past five bars. Now, if over the past five bars, the sum of this value is equal to zero, that means we have zero, 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 AKA a red dot, a red dot, a red dot, a red dot, and a red dot. Then we're going to need this value to give us the value of one. So we can say, if this value is equal to zero, then one else zero. We don't need to include the if part because by default, this would either just be zero or one, but I think it looks a little bit cleaner this way. Now that we have the five dots in a row, let's start by testing just this first. If I change this def now to a plot, since this is what we're looking to scan, I can click okay, run the scan, and we have 43 different places where we have five red squeeze dots in a row. If we choose any one here, so let's use Qualcomm as an example, and I come into a chart of Qualcomm, we can see that here we have five squeeze dots in a row. However, our moving averages here are definitely not stacked to the bullish side. They are in fact probably stacked to the bearish side here, but that's not the type of scan we're looking for. So now that we know that we're looking for five squeeze dots in a row, we can start to add in trend conditions to distinguish between bullish and bearish scans. So let's change this value back to a def. And now let's go ahead and define our EMAs. This should be something familiar and something that we've already done plenty of times before. But for those that have it, I'll give you a quick walkthrough. We're going to create a def value and I'm going to give my value or variable the name EMA8. This is going to be an exponential average. So we call the exponential average function. We pass in the close value is what price to use for the calculation. And we're going back a length of eight. So that's why we use exponential average close and eight here. Now I can copy paste this for the 21 EMA. And I can copy paste this one more time for the 34 EMA. Now the simple moving average is a little bit different. So if we start defining the 50 SMA next, so I'll say def SMA 50. Here, the function that we use is simple moving average. We pass in the close value and the length is 50. And same idea for the 200. And I can change 
the length along with our variable name. So now we've gotten all of the moving averages we care to look for. We now just need to create a bull stacked and a bear stacked variable, and that will allow us to pass that into our scan. So for our bull stacked, we can say EMA8 is e greater than EMA21, and EMA21 is greater than EMA34, and SMA50 is greater than SMA200. Now I can repeat the same thing for our bear stacked, but reverse all of these signs since we're looking for less than this time. And finally, we can write our new plot variable, which combines our stacked moving averages along with the five dots in a row. So I'll say plot signal is equal to five dots in a row. So this condition must be true, AKA equal to one. And for say our bullish stacked moving averages, the bull stacked value must be one. Same idea here. If we try to keep this a little bit cleaner, I'll say then one L zero, just so it's a little bit easier to read for those of you that want to see the true and false value. And now we know that both of these must be one in order for this signal value to also be one and return true. So now if I click OK and we run this, now our list becomes much smaller. We see the same Costco. We've already seen that, so let's choose a different stock here. Let's go to AutoZone, AZO. And inside of AutoZone, we can see we have more than the five red squeeze dots in a row along with stacked moving averages. Now for our bearish scan, all we need to do is change our bull stacked here to bear stacked instead. If I click OK and run this scan, now we can see all of the different places where we have bearish stacked moving averages along with a five dot squeeze. We already looked at Qualcomm as an example here. If we look at say eBay as another example, you can see exactly that here inside of eBay. Bearish stacked moving averages along with five plus red squeeze dots. So just like that, you've learned how to build your very own squeeze scan, which took advantage of this squeeze alert variable. And we used that along with the sum variable to easily scan for places where we had greater than five red squeeze dots in a row. Now that you know this skill, you can already think about the different patterns that you can scan for yourself and you can play around with the squeeze indicator a little bit more. For all Volatility Box members, be sure to check out the pro version of this tutorial because you'll find a lot more patterns that all of a sudden you're interested and now capable of scanning for with all of the different combinations available. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.